welcome to the third and final part in the series building a painting. This is this is the part where the painting actually gets finished so you can see the end result. At the moment again just working layer on layer, building the painting up, hence the title building. This is just defining some of the background elements and the shapes just to try and make them gel a little bit better and form a sort of coherent whole. So this isn't going to be the final coat that I'm putting on here, this is just something that I can work on top of. It looks like it's just a bit of red going on here, just to pop the figures out a bit. Again, most of the work here, as with the whole painting, is on the background, not the figures, because it's the background that defines the figures. Can't say that often enough that that has more influence than actual working on the figures it's themselves. So it's just this constant blocking in, redrawing, blocking in, adding extra elements, taking some away, and eventually we reach an endpoint. This painting's taken me a week to do. The sort of the three videos probably occupy about it's actually worked out about six hours in real time. But there's a lot of other sort of thinking time and planning that obviously I don't record, that'll be pretty boring. Aside from the week I spent on this one, I also spent a week on a study and looking through images and preparing and working out the layout and the first one did work as a template for this. That's really where the real work goes in. So overall this is a two week project. It's produced this set of how to videos, well not how to so much as this is what I did, um, a set for the other painting which I also recorded, they're also on YouTube. The Study is now up for a jury show at the Art Barn in Valparaiso, which I'll find out whether it got in hopefully Tuesday this coming week, which is two days from now. Um, and this painting, my wonderful wife likes it so much that she's put it up in our dining room to replace an old abstract that we've had there for three years. So it's up for sale and it'll be nice to sell it, but if not, it's it's got another life now. But this is an object lesson for anyone that thinks that painting is money for old rope or an easy way to earn a living. I mean, I could, I might one day get, say, $550 for this painting. Now, a lot of people would look at that and think, other than, other than thinking, oh, my four-year-old can do that, they'll think that's a lot of money. But if you think that represents over a week's work, really, including all the planning time, um, so for two weeks work I've ended up with two paintings that if I sold the main one it'll be what five or six if I sell the study I'll be lucky to get what 300 so that's $800 for two weeks work hardly living in the lap of luxury and once you knock off the cost of materials which in this case would be probably closing about 80 or 90 dollars it's it's a hard life um, I mean, it's a great life because you're doing what you love doing but very very few artists even relatively well known ones actually make a killing at this anyway just putting yet another glaze on the painting itself um, it's a yellow glaze you can see around the, the stairs and the balcony that is turn some of the colours to a slightly sort of greenish tint. This sort of, again, these glazes, they help to unify the painting. So, just a point, a small technical point, if I'm working a colour and I've just mixed it up, um, the first thing I do is try and find a part of the painting that um, that it won't really show too badly 
and preferably a part that's fairly close in colour just to give it a test stroke just to see and then from that test stroke I can work out how it's going to interact with other colours. I, I, I really like this effect on the cyan blue of putting a primary yellow over it to give it the green and make the green out of a glaze rather than mixing the green and putting it straight on the palette. I think it gives it a bit more life and this painting, the whole idea with, with it is all about life and dancing and it's actually a group of dancers and the right hand side of the canvas is sort of implies a street and the left hand side to an extent as well but the right hand side you've got the doorways and the houses going on but it's it's deliberately done to look almost like a stage set but that's that's what it's meant to be and obviously it's an abstraction so different people will see different things in it hopefully So again here just working these background shapes. The problem really is knowing when to stop working them and that's something that takes years and years of practice and I don't think you ever quite pull it off. So now I'm doing some blocking out. I've decided that these shapes aren't really going anywhere with the colours that are on them so basically I'm putting an off-white on and I'm going to start building them up again in a slightly different way keeping the structure of the painting the same. So you can see how uh, the process of of making a painting, it is building and it's not linear either. You can do some stuff, do some stuff, and then backtrack and then do some stuff. And it goes back to this thing that I keep banging on about the conversation between the artist and the canvas. So I'm still still working on what to do with the faces, still not happy with any ideas I've come up with yet. So here just putting a very sort of um, a very dilute purpley glaze down on these whites. So also part of the purpose of this white I wanted to integrate that stairway more into the painting rather than having it look like something that had just been sort of glued on more or less. So this is sort of, again this comes back to the analogy of building, of building the painting. You can see here now it's a little more abstract but I think it does fit the painting better. I'm just working the yellow now over the some of the dilute purple. Always trying to balance it up with different areas of the painting. I find working this way with one colour at a time, it does keep the balance and the painting doesn't seem to go too far out of whack. So once in a while I'll actually make up a palette like a normal artist would to work all the colours, but yep, generally speaking it's this layered approach. I'm not sure whether the think, thinking in terms of layers comes more from my art background or too much time spent in Photoshop on the on the graphics side of things. Um, the two definitely influence each other. There's no doubt about that. I've put a I put a video up of my of my digital work, more the art side than the design, uh, and the two definitely influence each other. If I spend a lot of time working on, say, a 3D rendering then elements of that will show the next time I do a painting and ideas do sort of, there is a lot of cross fertilization. Um, again some people think that's a bad thing, I don't have a problem with it, I think anything is fair game, um, anything at all for the real world or the screen, it's all, it's all, it's all fair. These are now the last few strokes, the paintings come about as far as I can take it. So thanks for watching and check out artbystevejohnson.com for much more, many more videos and a lot more paintings. So thanks for watching and goodbye.